And before I start um, my presentation, I'm going to give you a plug for the uh, Yamo County Historical Society uh, YouTube channel. Um, this is the previous channel that we thought we had lost access to, but I discovered it, logged in, got the password changed and all that. And uh, we've got um, event footage and uh, meeting footage. Um, we've got quite a few more programs to upload uh, and transferring uh, some, video, some VHS to DVD to a computer to YouTube. So it's been kind of a long process, but we've got some programs all the way back to about 2007, 2006, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, you can subscribe to the channel right, right there. And uh, we have a, there's a link to this channel on the uh, website. And uh, anyhow, okay. So I decided today that I would uh, do a presentation mostly on photos that I've personally been gathering. Um, you know, early 20th century, the uh, real photo postcard was a very popular way um, to um, preserve memories and share your travels and otherwise. And so these are actual, these are real photos from, you know, from negatives that were printed on actual photo stock. And then you could send them out and, uh, as a consequence of that, a lot of uh, early 20th century photos um, and views of various buildings only exist as postcards because they would be sent off to other places and, uh, or people have been collecting them for as long as they've existed. So I uh, have started going to uh, uh, antique shows and uh, postcard and paper shows and finding um, various Yamhill County um, images that are available. And uh, to start off with, here is a bird's eye photo of Carlton. Yeah, so there you can see the lake in the background there. Um, I believe that this is probably pre-1910. Um, you can actually date the postcards a little bit based off of the, the backside. There's the, where the stamp goes, there's special logos and you can kind of date them and then if they were sent, they would have a uh, postmark and tell you what exactly when they were sent. Um, so this is 47, um, you know, the main street right there. And this would be where Carlton Corners is. Um, what's amazing is pretty much all of these, a lot of these buildings aren't there anymore. Even like this brick structure, I don't, I think it's been replaced with another building. And, uh, Uh, the, so the, the other corner, like by the train depot, was kind of off of this image. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and another interesting thing is, and I don't know exactly the time period, but there was a big hotel, wood framed hotel, that was right here. And so obviously in this image, it's been uh, torn down. So that would help date it, but the, the, it takes some further research. Um, and this was taken from the uh, grain elevator. Um, not the, pre the present one, but one that existed before that. What, what year did you say that? Probably pre-1910, I'm going to say 1908, 1909 maybe. Um, further research would be required. So then here's another image that is from the same series. I'm guessing that there were probably more produced, but I only found these two um, at an antique show. So this is looking south. So right here is now 47. And they had a wood sidewalks and just a narrow little path there. And several of these houses are still there. Um, I know that this house is still there. I've kind of checked it out. This is kind of one with the columns and everything. I love the bird's eye photos. I've been trying to find as many as possible. Here's a picture, a unique view of uh, Carlton Lake. It's marked down on the bottom as Picnic Grounds and Lake Carlton, Oregon. I'm not exactly sure what year this is um, yet, 
and I'm not quite sure where this is. It must be to the west, possibly, of the, of the mills that were there. Um, but like I said, this, uh, it's amazing the amount of unique um, images you can find. Um, just going to the antique shows and uh, the vendors there, and eBay. If we go on eBay, there's quite a few uh, photos available. And here's an uh, image of the original bridge over uh, Cozine um, between Linfield and the rest of the town. Um, this would be the original hospital, the Mill built in 1911, and the original Columbus School, which was built in 1892, or four. Um, I believe this particular photo was taken um, about 1912, thereabouts, because the uh, hospital was built in 1911, and then this bridge was replaced not too long after with a cement um, concrete bridge. And I think this one is one that I actually bought off of eBay out of like Arizona, I think. It's amazing how uh, these uh, images uh, get around. And this right here is a photo actually out of the YCHS collection, but this shows you how these images can uh, give you kind of a sense of how things have changed over the years, because this was taken from a very uh, similar position, probably, you know, 1915 there, uh, thereabouts, of the replacement bridge of the previous one. Um, and then this was later replaced in the uh, 50s um, when they extended Adams Street through here and made 99 uh, one way both ways and uh, and of course the uh, Columbus School was replaced in 28 or late 20s with the uh, brick building that was later uh, torn down after the 1993 earthquake. So here's a picture of uh, Courthouse Square Park in Dayton. And uh, this, I believe, is the old fire department. So there's the bell and the stall for This is probably before they had motorized equipment, so it's probably horse-drawn. And uh, this would be the uh, south, uh, southwest corner on Ferry Street uh, of the park. So the fort would be off to the right. <laughs> Like I said, I love the bird's eye view photos because there's so much uh, detail in these. But here's a bird's eye view of uh, Dundee, uh, probably, you know, circa 1910. Like I said, there's a lot of research that goes into figuring out some of the dates on these. I believe that these are prune trees. Um, if you can zoom in a bit. And this would be where 99 is now. And there's some uh, prune dryer, uh, fruit dryer facilities. Uh, there's railroad cars on a railroad siding there. Was that a covered bridge there? Right. Nope, that's actually the freight depot for the railroad. Oh, okay. The other thing that's cool about these images is that um, because they're from the, the real photos from the negatives, you can often get a lot of detail out of them when you scan them. It's 99 running east and west or north and south? Yeah, left, left to right okay. on here. So yeah, so right, right along there, okay. parallel to the railroad. So this is looking yeah, to the southeast. And sometimes there's, you know, find really kind of random photos, like here's the Harper residence in Dundee. I don't know who the Harpers were or where this house is yet, but um, they must have been prominent enough to have their, their, their house photographed and made as a postcard with the title and everything. Because this was obviously like a professional photographer did this. Um, what year do you 
think that was? Teens era. Um, probably find them in the 1910 or 1920 census. Exactly. That's uh, <laughs> like I've obviously got a lot of research left to do. <laughs> And this image is actually not off of a postcard, it's off of a uh, mounted photo that I recently got at the uh, Antiques Expo at the Expo Center in Portland a couple weeks ago. Um, this image was marked as uh, being in, of a Dundee uh, prune dryer. And you know, I looked on the back of the photo and I couldn't like tell, I couldn't see any markings on there. And so I asked the uh, vendor, how do you know that this is uh, Dundee? And he said, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure that there were some markings on the back. And you know, the lighting wasn't very good, but I could kind of see, OK, it says some stuff like Dundee and other stuff. So OK, I'll take your word for it. And I bought it and uh, brought it home. And I looked a little bit closer at the back, and just faintly I could see in pencil there were some names. And it said the, na the name of the fruit, the fruit dryer. I can't really remember off the top of my head, but uh, two of the names that I saw in there were uh, by the last name of Parrot and Hadley, which I know are pretty common names in the Newburgh Dundee area. So, but this is a really great image because so those are prunes on a drying tray right there. How much do you have to pay for the postcard? <laughs> um, I've been all over the place from a couple bucks to thirty, forty dollars for a really wow, nice one. Yeah. Um, But anyhow, this is a really, uh, I really like this image because, you know, prunes were such a big part of the agricultural economy in the valley, and it's really cool to get this image where they're kind of showing off their product there, and um, it's just hard to imagine what it was like to be working there, you know, 100 years ago. Um, and I did some further research, and I think we actually have like a, a copy of a, of a copy of this image. But here's a picture of Lafayette um, from across the Amhill River. So this is uh, looking this is from the DV Old House. So this would be kind of across Lafayette Highway from the uh, Cook House. If that um, rings a bell. And. Can zoom in a little bit there, and there's the polling church, and there's the old courthouse right there. So, right over here would be where the uh, city park that's down by the river. And uh, like I said, there's just so much detail in these images. You can see houses that you know haven't were torn down even 100 years ago, and changes in the vegetation and everything. Church right there. So we know it was 1909, or because wasn't the church built in 1909? It was the 1890s. 1892. Yeah. Yeah. The church was built before the courthouse. Yeah. It was when the fire, so isn't that a relatively narrow window of time? Yeah, right, because the courthouse burnt down. So yeah, that would that would help date it. So this is the first courthouse? Yeah, the original county courthouse, which was later, I think, used as a seminary, I think, and then the oh, broom. Yeah. And what year did it burn? I don't remember off the top of my head. Go to our research center. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a picture of the uh, Lafayette locks. Um, amazingly, like, actually, I bought this. So. I've also recently joined the Web Footers Postcard Club, which is based out of Portland, and it's a postcard collector's club. And they have uh, monthly meetings, and people actually bring in boxes and boxes of postcards, and you can buy and sell them there. And I picked up this one because it didn't seem familiar, and I went and looked through the YCHS collection, and we don't have this particular image, this shot of from like down on the water looking straight at it. It's kind of a unique view. We have a lot of views from like up, up on the hill of it. Was that the caretaker's house up above there? Um, I think that's, there's it, one there. 
Well, yeah, there's... I can't remember off the top of my head. I know, like, the Voxmaster, that's the one that's still there, but it's would be off to the right there as you came down into the, what's now the park. And here's an interesting photo that I also found at the postcard club meeting is this picture taken at Linfield, you know, probably circa you know, 1910. This gentleman named Harold, I guess this was his job, uh, splitting wood for the boilers back behind Pioneer Hall. And what I love about an image like this is, is that this is probably a one of one. You know, somebody had their picture taken and then they've, you know, they uh, put it onto a postcard postcard stock, and this is very unlikely to exist anywhere else. Uh, and I'm sure if I do some research, I could probably figure out what his last name was. He was a herald, and he worked at Linfield in <laughs> about 1910-ish. <1910 laughs> and here's another Linfield photo, probably almost more like 20s era, of a footbridge and this kind of arbor, or I don't, I can't really tell. I think it maybe says cherry, possibly, but <laughs> Geary, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Might have to, have to do some more research, but <clears throat> Geary. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, back to some more bird's eye photos. Um, and this is McVinville. And I've actually got a series of them, which I've sort of just gathered up kind of unintentionally. I mean, I've been trying to find as many bird's eye photos of McVinville that, I, that the, sor the historical society doesn't have. And I just happened to, once I actually got the images, look at, compare them and realize that they're actually maybe from the same series. Um, so this is taken from the courthouse looking to the southwest. So this would be what was later the St. Barnabas Church, which was replaced by Physicians Medical Center. Um, this would be where the original OMI building, which is you know, still there, and then this is the parking lot back behind it, where the Christian church was. Uh, there's the pavilion where uh, the swimming pool is now. and. Way up above that is the old star mill facility. What's the big building to the left, kind of off on the steeple of that church? Over there. That building? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's the building that was where Montgomery Wards is now, but it was the building that was there before. Um, yeah, so Borden was, but the building that existed before that building was built in the 20s. So I believe that this series of photos was taken about 1908. So this was one that I think I bought at a... Uh, actually, okay, so this one, this one comes after another image that I got, but I bought this one off of eBay. It had been kind of sitting there for a while and... Uh, but here's another image that I actually bought at a postcard show. And I'm pretty sure that this is the same series because the church has this weird, like, primered spot on it. And if I quickly go back to, if you notice, it's got that spot there. And then it was obviously about the same time of year, too, since the, le the trees all have leaves. Um, there's just so much going on in this image. I mean, you can see there's the tower of the old fire department on uh, Cal Street. Um, this would be the, the Jacobson block, where, well, where the, the U.S. Bank is now. Um, well, even there was a barn right downtown. <laughs> yeah, well, there was um, where the Elks Lodge is right here was a livery stable before that. And uh, here was the original Masonic building right there um, before the building that Harvest Fresh is at was constructed. 
and I could go on and on and on. There's, there's so much interesting stuff in these images, but I'll move on to another image that I think might have been taken. It was definitely taken from the courthouse. The image quality is slightly different, but it could be just that it wasn't handled properly. Uh, so this is Fifth Street right here. Um, there is the, where the railroad tracks go. And Buchanan Cellars Mill right there. And you can see uh, it doesn't show up as well in this image, but this is the old uh, freight depot. Or the old railroad depot, the original railroad depot, which would be back behind where the old power plant um, was, which is now Elizabeth uh, Chambers Cellars. What was the X mark? Um, somebody's house. Okay. I think I, I think that there was a note on the back of this one that they haven't been able to decipher yet. Um, there's the old uh, St. James School, the original one. About the same location. Um, actually, no, because I think, you know, Third Street dead ended right at the school, and then when they extended, when they built Three Mile Lane out there, they they tore it down, back in the fifties. Yeah. Um, Pages Woven Wire Fence Company. Um, that building right over here is, was a creamery. Um, that, that would be located where the parking lot for uh, Golden Valley is. And the building was still there relatively recently, at least through the 80s, maybe even late 90s. Here's another bird's eye view that was taken a little bit later than probably, this is probably more like about teens. So there's some changes like um, this building over here, which I think they, they used the offices for the news reporter um, magazine or newspaper, which was one of the predecessors to the news register. Um, and you know, a lot of the same buildings, um, but there's just so much to, to look at in these. It's amazing. Okay, the move kind of more street level downtown. I uh, This is one of the first photos I think I got um, as I started collecting because I had never seen this particular uh, image before. So this is Third Street, uh, Third and Ford. So there's the old Odd Fellows Lodge. Um, Hotel Oregon, McMinnon is now, Taylordale Hardware. Um, this would be the Odell um, Auto Repair Shop where News Register offices are now. Um, what year do you think this is? Um, probably, you know, 1912, 1915. Mm -hmm. There's an electric, there's a street light. Yeah, there's, there's uh, well, it's not a street, it's not a stoplight, but it's a, it's a light over the, you know, the street light. Um, and this was before the Bennett building was built, so that does date it. Um, actually, it's probably almost more like 1918, I think, because the the hardware building was built later in the decade. But um, the car is more 1918. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, I remember I remember that now because I think, like I said, this building was built later. Another interesting factoid is that this wood frame structure here on the corner is actually still um, extensively remodeled, but that was the building where the Farn Farnham Electric was. And it's now where the uh, is it RJ Studios, the photography studio. Apparently this building, this wood frame building, was they like stuccoed over it and stuff, and it's still there now. I'd always assumed, looking at these pictures, that they had torn down the building and built something new. But I was walking along the street and noticed the uh, there's a National Register plaque as as it's a part of the downtown historic district, and it said circa 1880. And I was like, what? Another. Uh, 
This is a Adams and Third looking towards the park and the library. So there's, so there's the library. So th this dates it to after 1912. Also, the roads are paved. So um, Third Street was originally paved in 1912, so that can help date photos. And at this time, you could actually drive a car out into City Park. They had paved, I guess, driveways, you would call them. <laughs> and uh, there's the old Civic Center built in about 1906 which they had uh, dances and um, performances, and uh, it was also, it served a function as an armory, too, before um, the next one was built. But it, that building lasted until the uh, 20s. Is that the star mill in the Yes, yes it is. It doesn't show up very well in this image, but yeah, that's the star mill. So this is the first of a series of postcards um, that I found with a uh, photo uh, dealer from Seattle, who his, his business is he buys and sells photos and um, other ephemera like you know maps and brochures and stuff like that. And I found one of these images um, in, you know, he categorizes photos by like where they're from. And so I found one of the images and then I found a couple more and some binders he had that were obviously the, from the same event. So this is on Third Street. Um, I can't remember exactly what the name of that building back in there, but it would be where Thrifty Drug was later on. And then there's the Masonic building where a, a Harvest Rush is now. And I don't know exactly what event, I'm thinking maybe Fourth of July probably. Um, And it's obviously after 1912 because the street is paved. Yeah, it could be. Like, it probably could be later. Hmm. Okay. Um, so there's about four of them. So here's another. So I think this would be about where Community Plate is now. I think it's like Pure Vena and then Community Plate. So it'll give you kind of a sense where, what building that is. And uh, kind of a weird image because I'm not sure why it's taken so low and why there's people in the way, but it still was definitely worth getting because there's a lot. Well, one, it has a date. It doesn't say exactly what year it is for the Farmer's Week, it says come back for Farmer's Week, June 21st through 22nd. So that could probably help kind of pin down what year this is. But you can see the Yamhill Hotel building in um, Hotel Oregon, Union Block. But the thing is, is like these were all, these particular images were all for sale individually. And for me, it's like they're most valuable together as a whole package rather than, because some people will just collect images because they, they like pictures of old cars or, you know, certain styles of dress or whatever. And, you know, a dealer will get a collection of postcards and kind of split them up. Whereas me, I'm just like, you got to keep the context because sometimes you end up with, photos where there's no markings on the back, but if you had ones that had the markings and said like what event it was, who they were, then you would be able to identify the other ones. So here's a kind of, I mean, kind of random card I found recently at the Antiques Expo that was, it was marked on the back. Um, I can't remember the, the girls' names on the top, off the top of my head, but this was taken at the A.D. Cook House in McVinville. And uh, so I just had to, get, had to get it because this would be definitely a good one for the collection because um, it actually says who's in the image. Because a lot of times you find these postcards and they don't have any names on them. So you don't really even know who they are or where they were taken. Is 
there a date on that one? Um, there isn't. Oh, but like I said, it does. I can date it based off of what kind of card stock it's on. Um, at least narrow it down. If you were just kind of a you know random print of a photo I found, um, having to do with uh, the milk um, gathered for the Christmas relief ship, which I think this dates us about late 40s. And this was taken at the farmer's uh, co-op creamery. So this would be 99 right here. Looking at McKee's Court, which was an old auto court that was where, uh, I think would be where Sandwich Express is now. Actually, actually Graham Truck Line was owned by Lauren Marquis uh, from uh, Sheridan. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen some other pictures in the News Register archives of their uh, equipment. He's actually my grandmother's first cousin. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but what's amazing is in this picture, like, so there's these these old uh, auto courts and stuff that are, you know, long gone now. But I didn't even know we're over there. And like I said, I was just flipping through a box of photos, and I saw it's like, okay, it says Portland, McMinnville, and Coast. And then I looked a little bit closer, and it's like, oh, there's Farmers Co-op Creamery. So it's McKinville. What were they hauling? Uh, can they, they were hauling LTL less than both. They yeah. had the same thing that I saw nowadays. Huh. But the difference is back then it was all controlled and regulated by the federal DOT. And so like Grand Truck Line had the lane from Portland to McMinnville and to the coast <laughs> to Lincoln City. No different than in today's time where TP Freight out of Tillman had the Tillman Portland Auto Freight. That was designed back then. They hauled all the freight. From Portland to Tillamook and Tillamook back to Portland. And any other freight line that had product to move into that area, they had to interline it with a carrier due to the regulation. Because they only had so many carriers in each spot. Was that canned? Yeah, canned and powdered milk, 13,400 pounds for the Christmas relief ship from McBinville, Oregon. And I'm sure I probably, like looking through the news register, I could probably figure out, you know more of an exact date, but... Okay, so, you know, previously yeah, I've uh, done some presentations about the uh, city park and the swimming pools, and here's a, another uni unique view of the city park and the swimming pool that I just had to get as soon as I was flipping through the postcards and I saw this and I'm like, I've never seen this before, gotta get it. So there's the original swimming pool in McFinnville over in City Park with the uh, Statue of Liberty and the bandstand. What happened to the Statue of Liberty? From what I uh, gathered, it was made out of like plaster and chicken wire and it just kind of eventually disintegrated and they took it out. Um, so this would be kind of in the vicinity of the PlayStation now. Um, like bathrooms would be kind of over here. And Where did they keep the bear? Um, off to the left. In fact, I think the next image, no, not this one yet, but here's another one that, um, so Park Drive would be like right over here. Um, you know, after I got this one, I actually ordered this one off of eBay. I was like looking at this and I almost couldn't recognize where this was, but this clump of oak trees kind of gives it away because I can see it in the background of some other uh, photos. So here was an image I found. Um, so one of the interesting things about these real photo postcards is, like I said, you could get, you could take your own photos and, and have them printed on postcards. So you, sometimes you find like one of one images and I was at an antique mall in Albany looking through a box of miscellaneous cards. The first card I looked at was this one. And I recognized this. I'm probably the only person who would ever have looked at that box that would have recognized them. Because there's the old Civic Center right there. And so this was before 1912 because the library isn't there yet. And this also shows you how, yes, you could drive your car out to the <laughs> city park. You could also ride your horse. I'm pretty sure that's a horse back there. <laughs> oh, 
Unfortunately, there's no like uh, names or anything on the back, but um, like I said, I'm probably the only person who would have recognized it, so I'm glad I found it. Look how the kids are dressed in suits. Yeah, so I don't... have a hard time getting a kid in a suit today in the park. Yeah, I don't know what uh, event or whatever this would have been for. Okay, so, yeah, so the bear pit is kind of up in here, where they have the, the pen where they have the bear. So this would be off towards Cozine. Cozine Creek would be to the left. And uh, here's a there's a drinking fountain here. I'm not really sure why it's kind of tucked away into this little nook there. Do we know anything about Um. I think that the, I've, I've seen some stuff written. It sounded like maybe after they disbanded the zoo, that it might have been sent off to be eaten somewhere. We had a zoo? Well, or, we, or just a zoo? Bears, and there were deer, too. I've seen some pictures of a deer enclosure. Um, so here's a, a picture of the Happy Acres Hospital which is located where the Bayou Golf Course is now. Um, yeah, I guess, so is that building still there? I think there's a little bit of it. Okay, um, and it was originally kind of a uh, facility uh, chiropractic care, it's kind of uh, Dr. White, I think it was, who was a pioneer in bringing chiropractic care to Oregon. But this, this image is quite a bit later, like I think this is probably more about 50s, um, by the time you get to the 50s, like the real photo cards started to kind of fall out of favor, and it was mostly ones that were printed. And here's a there's a Cook School, probably uh, I'm thinking like late 40s. I like how the pine tree is quite a bit shorter in there. And here it, oh, sorry. There we go. There is the later version of the hospital located where Walgreens is now. And uh, yeah, the, this particular image, the quality of the image isn't very good. It's very like blotchy. And, but I've seen other copies of this photo that were exactly like that. So I don't know if the negative itself wasn't very good, but you know. It seems impossible that that size of building could be sitting there for Walgreens when you're driving. Yeah. I've been in it. Yeah, I was born at the hospital. And I mean, I remember it when I was little before they tore it down. Um, and they also have these big oak trees there. And here's another view of the, the Christian church that would be located back behind where OMI is. So um, the original my building is right there. This was torn down somewhere late 50s, early 60s, I think. Yeah, because I think I've seen some pictures in the news register archives. Of them going through. But this was built in about 1898. And this is Fifth Street right there and uh, Davis, I think. And so the, this one's definitely a 50s era photo because all the cars are 50s, probably like mid to late 50s. And here's a picture that I, another one I got off of eBay. This is actually a, from a snapshot that I got from like North Carolina. The, the dealer from North Carolina, here's a picture of the Lamont um, glove factory at um, Second and uh, Baker. <coughs> so this is Baker Street. This is Second Street. And this would be the parking for uh, First Federal. And this would be where the cornerstone uh, drive through coffee stand was. So this is where all the construction's going on right now. So this building was originally built uh, as 
as a meeting hall for the Woodmen of the World um, fraternal organization. And I think it was later the sports shop? Or sports center, yeah. And was later uh, torn down in the 80s, I think. I like right here, uh, it doesn't show, this is a sign, neon sign for the Oregon Hotel. So, the, you know, looking around at photos, I ended up finding quite a few uh, school photos, like class photos. So this is from a postcard that I was just looking through some miscellaneous Oregon postcards of the show and found this uh, sixth grade class photo from Cook School, from the, the second Cook School, the wood framed one, before the current one was built. And I'm guessing maybe about 1905, um, judging by the... the the back of the photo, the back of the postcard, I can the, the markings and stuff, and then the dress too. Yeah, the Fortunately, no names, but maybe you could find out like at least the names of like the the teachers. And... and then here is a later Cook School photo. Probably 20s, actually, because this is from the previous. This is the the Cook School before the current Cook School, which was built in 2008. And so this is probably one of the last years before they built the new one. And this one, this photo I got, it was mount. It was mounted in the you know the cardboard frame, and then it has names on the back, so the people are identified in this image. So, so that's one of the reasons I got, I got it, because, you know, it's got all the information on the back. And then this next one is from right after the current one was built. So this was in 29. So this is one of the first classes to go through. Here's another, so this, this is another postcard image, um, and this is in Lafayette. It said on the back, uh, Lafayette Primary School, or Primary School Class in Lafayette, and it was taken in 1920. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the name, there's no names of the kids, but I think there was the name of the teacher. And so this is, uh, this would be the current, the, the, well, the old schoolhouse that's still there in Lafayette. And this would be looking towards the east. So I believe that house in the corner there is that old house that's across from the gym, the old gym where the bricks furniture is now. And then here's another kind of just you know random school photo I found at an antique store in uh, Lincoln City. And this is a picture um, probably almost, I would say circa 1900 maybe 1900, 1905, of Newburgh. This is the uh, Newburgh Public School. I don't have an exact year, but I do have the names of the students in the picture. And getting towards the end here, here, like I said, you know, there's a lot of just kind of miscellaneous photos that you find. So this picture doesn't have the names, but written on the back, as I was flipping through a bunch of random cards, it said, taken and shared in Oregon. I don't know who's in the picture, but there's houses in the background, and there's part of this house. So I figured we probably could figure out possibly where this was taken. Um, you notice in the background there, there's a cow. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I guess the you know, important thing to remember is there's a lot of historic photos, well, not just in Yankee County, but just in general, that are just out there, you know, floating around. People, you know, 
their grandparents had a, a postcard collection or they've got you know family photos or whatever that are they have and then there's also when those people pass away and you know their estates sell everything off these photos get passed on to dealers hopefully they get passed on hopefully they don't get thrown out which does happen to a lot of stuff but um, it's uh, there's so much out there that's left to be gathered you know I mean we our collection I mean we have a lot of photos of YCHS but it barely scratches the surface of what's available and it's really important that we work on like you know gathering up these so that's kind of why I've started doing it because there's so much amazing imagery out there that needs to be saved and I think I will end with this. I have tons more photos that I could share, but I tried to keep it a little bit more manageable this time. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent work, Michael. Thank you, Michael.